Hello Websters, I'm Jacob. And I'm Dave. And today we are looking at the most thrilling component of any computer build. The graphics card? No. Uh, processor? No. Uh, these little flashy LED strip light things? No. Just stop. It's the power supply, obviously. Obviously, yeah, if you say so. Well, let's get to it. Here's everything you need to know about these anonymous power bricks and how to install one in your system. What do you mean anonymous? This one has a gold rating and is rated to 850 watts, while this one is only a bronze rating and 730 watts. They could be more different. It's like Mary and Paul when you choose what watch and it comes to a picking a PSU because you need to know the one that exactly covers your system's requirements, gets the efficiency right, and what about the type of fan? You've got an eco mode, you've got to bear all these things in mind. There's so much difference you can get between all these things. So Wattage has the biggest part to play when it comes to picking the right power supply unit, or PSU for short. PSUs usually range from around 250 watts up to 1500 watts, although for most gaming desktop needs you'll be looking for around 450 to 650 mark. What wattage you require all depends on the power draw from your PC's components, most notably in gaming rings for the graphics card. For an easy starting point, you can usually find the recommended wattage required by your graphics card on the box it arrived in. You can also use a PSU calculator to figure out the roundabout wattage your com uh, computer will require with your components. Cooler Master have put together a useful calculator on their site, although a quick Google search will bring up plenty of others too. These calculators should give you a rough idea of what wattage you need, but always give yourself a little extra headroom just in case later on you decide on overclocking or you want to throw in an extra graphics card or two. PSUs operate on some pretty clear-cut efficiency ratings. The 80 plus certification makes your job searching for the right PSU that much easier. So this certification is made up of 80 plus, bronze, silver, gold, platinum and lastly titanium. 80 plus, the non-precious metal based one, is rated at 80% efficiency under 50% load, while titanium is rated at 94% efficiency. Not to confuse things, but these efficiency ratings are different for the 230 volt grid used here in the UK compared to the 150 volt used in the US, so they actually are slightly more efficient for everyone on the higher voltage systems. So depending on how active you are on your PC, these differing efficiencies can be worth more to you than others, but either way, they can be a solid guide on the quality of the components within the power supply. More efficient parts tend to be of a higher quality for the most part. While this is generally true among respected brands, it's always worth investing in a power supply from a known entity in the business. While there can be some seemingly good deals out there on power supplies, it is such a crucial component to the longevity and lifespan of your components and can cause critical failures, e.g. they blow up and take your PC out with them, in the worst case scenarios. So what is another great sign of quality is the length of warranty on the unit. Some of the best power supply units in the market have warranties up to 10 years, and you don't always need to spend a fortune on these higher quality assurances either. Some PSUs also come equipped with zero fan or eco modes, which, as you might imagine, turn the fan off until it is necessary. Just make sure to switch this on before you put the PSU inside your case. It's kind of a bit awkward to get to otherwise. When it comes to power supply style, well, you pretty have one choice, black and kind of cuboid. There is the odd white PSU, but most cases tend to obscure your power supply with either a shroud or hiding it around the back of the motherboard. There are also different sizes. You've got the ATX ones, which go in a standard ATX case, or these little SFX duties here, which are really cute. Where a PSU can make a difference in your rig suite style is the cables it comes with. Some PSUs come with those ketchup and mustard style cables, while others come with removable ones that are a little more subtle, like these. Non-modular PSUs often only offer the most important cables that most builders will need for their rig. This makes it especially important to check exactly what cables you need before you go and plug in all your components and realise you're missing an 8-pin VGA cable to power your graphics card. Semi-modular offer the basics pre-wired in, but usually come with some of the non-essential or potentially excessive cables in the box. This means you can save space or carry out your cable management without any fuss along the way. Right, so modular power supplies ditch any of the pre-wired cables. This is not only great for cable management, but means you can purchase really sexy cables to really stun out your case if you're fancy. So do bear in mind, however, that the cable headers going into your PSU are not always uniform with other manufacturers. So as a rule, it's best to never pick and choose from multiple units. So let's get into the 12 volt rail wait, ripple. Wait, wait, can I see that for a second? Give us a script. Uh, ripple, 5 volts, millivolts, oscilloscope, voltage regulation, what, there's, there's more? Power spiking, thermal efficiency? No, 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 this way, I'm, I'm cutting this, I'm cutting this. So if we're getting onto the build. So now that you've picked up the best PSU for the job, obviously an AI controlled RGB PSU. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's time to install it in your system. 
It's normally a pretty simple transplant to swap out your old PSU and put a new one in, but it's a lot easier if you know exactly which cables need extracting first. So firstly, you want to disconnect the motherboard ATX24 pin, the CPU 4 plus 4 pin, your graphics card power connectors, which could range from a single 6-pin PCIe to a dual 8-pin connector, and also a SATA power cable for every storage device inside your case. You could also have a few Molex connections from your current PSU too. These power plugs are a little bit old school nowadays, but check for any of these before ripping that power supply out of the back of your case. There are only a few connections within your PC that need unplugging. You can leave all the case cabling, such as the power and reset switches, as well as the audio, USB and motherboard fan headers intact. Now grab your new PS2, and if you're going for a full or semi-modular one, get all those cables plugged into your power supply first. You may find it awfully tricky to plug those connections in once your PSU is snugly fit inside your chassis, so it's best to do it beforehand. Feed these cables through the back of your case and orient your PSU. You likely want the fan facing downwards out of a rear or sideways vent on the case and not upward into the chassis, although case designs do vary. With your PSU nestled within your case, pull those cables through the closest cable gap tidy thingy and through the back of your case. Feed the motherboard cable through the closest cable routing hole to the large connector often near the upper right of your board, and get this plugged in. Do the same for the CPU, up near the top left of your MOBO, and your graphics card somewhere in the middle. You can likely leave the SATA and power cables near the back for your SSD or hard drive, or pull them through where necessary. With these all plugged in, tidy up your cables and you're pretty much good to go. Connect your kettle plug and flick the switch on the exterior of the power supply unit. Yeah, so only real amateurs forget the switch on the back. If you've liked what you've seen and have found our guide super helpful, then give us a like and click that little subscribe button for even more in hardware and gaming. Yes, and check back on our site, pcgamesn.com, for a daily fix of gaming and hardware news too. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Goodbye. Bye.